You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Spiritual Kung Fu with your host, Akalon Hollingsworth. Trained as a Kung Fu priest, Akalon is here to help you win your inner battles and bring light to the darkness in our world. Akalon shares skills, methods, and insights from the self mastery system he developed from his Kung Fu priest training out of nearly 30 years of study and experience. So, welcome the host of Spiritual Kung Fu, Akalon Hollingsworth. Hello and welcome to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I hope you're all feeling good tonight. A brief note before we begin this episode. Next week, I'm very excited about this. Next week, I will be addressing the war between women and men. Listen in for the Spiritual Kung Fu's way of handling this conflict. And for those of you, another note here, for those of you who listened in last week, even though it was a holiday, Thanksgiving, uh, because it was a holiday, we re-aired the first episode of this show, which was the origin or the how, how spiritual kung fu came to be. So that's why we did the replay for the holiday. Now, tonight... I'm continuing from the previous live episode the week before Thanksgiving. And that episode, some of you will remember, those of you that were listening to that one, I gave an introduction to mental kung fu. For those of you who are new to the show, mental kung fu is a component art of spiritual kung fu. And again, for those of you first listening, uh, spiritual kung fu is the self-mastery system I developed out of my kung fu priest training as well as an art and practice of bringing light to the darkness. In that introduction, I gave mental, I gave a mental Kung Fu. I talked about training the mind and the need to do so. I also shared a couple of mental Kung Fu techniques. At the end of that episode, I talked about the mind's ability to cut you off from what feels good, particularly from what feels good inside you, in your being. I urge listeners to do everything they could to remove any mental barrier their mind had uh, created to feeling good and connect to that which is within you that does feel good. Tonight, I'm going to talk more about that. I'm going to talk with you about, whereas last, the Kung Fu, mental Kung Fu episode introduction was about more about managing the mind and training the mind. Tonight, I'm going to talk about going beyond the mind. To feel good. When your mind fixates on things that make you feel bad, it collects thoughts and perceptions that make you feel worse. Unchecked, the mind will go on like that, gathering these unhappy thoughts and perceptions and concentrating them into a barrier. Not intentionally, but it happens. A mental wall gets created that cuts you off from your access to what makes you feel better, whether in the world or inside you and keeps repeating those thoughts, which hardens the mental barrier to enjoyment, which intensifies your suffering. None of that sounds fun, and of course it's not. So we're going to work on circumventing that. So anyway, in this way, your mind can trap you in suffering and then reinforce and perpetuate it. You end up against this mental wall. You end up against the wall bombarded by mental agitation. And the irony is that on the other side of that wall are the things that make you feel better. Have you ever seen someone in this state of being, someone isolating themselves from what they could enjoy in life and in themselves? Uh, 
Perhaps you know of someone who doesn't feel loved even when people are actively loving them or who isn't showing up for the enjoyable things in a relationship. Perhaps even you have been unable at some time to feel enjoyments in your being as your mind isolated you from them. Perhaps uh, you've tried to help someone in this predicament connect with point you put, maybe you point out to them what here's here's these things that you could be enjoying right now you can feel better just cheer up and then it's hard still hard for that person to connect or you in that situation to connect to what feels good that other people are pointing out things that you can feel good about now mental kung fu frees you from this trap with mind management skills and with regular practice this becomes easy what I shared about mental Kung Fu so far in this series will help you with this. And so I will teach more about this uh, mental Kung Fu in future episodes. Tonight, I'm sharing with you an additional way to get through your mind's mental barriers to feeling good. This is the way of going. This is going beyond your mind. And it's a nice little shortcut through that wall. It's like teleporting past the wall to the good stuff or jumping through the wall like it's an illusion, which it is, ultimately. Now, how can you do this when your mind controls your perception of the wall? Aside from using mental kung fu skills to manage your mind, that is, well, you remember that your mind is only a part of you and you let other parts of you assert their influence on your experience. Your body, your heart, and your soul can bring you beyond your mind. Your heart in particular can bring you through a mental suffering wall and connect you to what feels good. I say your heart particularly because it's where so much of what makes you feel good is. After all, it is your love center. If you allow it, your heart will connect, with, connect you to what feels good even when it's experiencing heartache or emotional pain, which is impressive. And I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming episode about overcoming tragedy. Now, continuing on with tonight's theme, you may be wondering how your heart can connect you with what feels good when your mind is cutting you off from that connection. You can help your mind and your heart make this switch by doing something I talked about in a previous episode. Remember, I've been saying that what I present in one episode will help you apply what I present in other episodes? Well, here is a great example of that. I have previously talked about action over thought and the helpfulness of being action-based more than thought-based. Applying this will help your mind relinquish its control and soften its perception of the mental kung fu wall as you shift gears from thought to action. When I introduced this thought over action before, I, I gave you the general dynamic, and I, I didn't have time in that episode for a specific example, not that I recall at least. But here, putting it into action. So, now what action you, okay, Aklan, you say action will bring you out of your mind or beyond your mind. What action are you talking about? Well, the specific action I'm talking about here is connection or connecting and specifically connecting with your heart. So you shift gears from thinking into action, into doing, and what you're doing is connecting. So you shift into the emphasis of connecting and that action and connecting with your heart. Now, when you do, you tap into all that good stuff in there, into what feels good. So it's you bypass the wall or you cut through it and you have your access. Now, some of this, a lot of what I teach experientially when you're doing it, it's very simple in practice when you're hearing it and I'm introducing concepts and methods, insights, it can seem a little, little challenging conceptually. But putting it into practice is what I encourage you will discover that you can do this stuff. And we're going to talk more about this after this brief break. This is Spiritual Kung Fu, 
I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, now I was talking about these new concepts. Sometimes if they're, if they're challenging to conce- conceptually, you know, intellectually, as you're hearing them, still go ahead and, and experiment, practice, and uh, explore. It's it's in the it's in the application where where the magic happens, and so I'm talking to you from experience, and I everything I present, I do, and I've gotten so used to doing these things that they've become easy. But I did this with practice, better with practice, just like anything else. Okay, so with going beyond your mind, and I was talking about using action, the action of connecting to your heart. And that, that helping and using this is also as an example of something I present in one episode. This time was a couple weeks back in the introduction to mental Kung Fu, helping you apply something I present in another episode. In this case, today, going beyond your mind. Just remember that, and again, as you, the more episodes you listen to and collect skills, You practice one, and that will help you practice another. And that just makes it all easier progressively. Now, applying this shift from thought to action, from the mind, and if it's in a state of uh, barring you from connecting to what feels good, uh, when you apply this shift to connecting to your heart, Applying this will help your mind relinquish its control and soften its perception of the mental suffering wall as you shift gears from thought to action. That's how a moment before the break, I asked that question I threw out there. So, okay, Eklan, if how do you, if the mind is controlling the perception of this, this, this mental suffering wall that is creating, how can the heart help you get through that and go beyond the mind? Well, here, as you shift an action of connection to your heart, like I just said, the, the mind softens its perception of the wall. It relinquishes some of its control, and that makes it easier to shift into the heart. And then, of course, once you start feeling a little bit of the good stuff, a little bit of what f- makes you feel good, that right there is the biggest incentive that flips the dynamic, and you're, you're connected once you start feeling a little bit of better 
a little bit of good or enjoyment, then you know you can do it. Where if the mind before that was telling you you couldn't anymore, you, you just can't feel good for whatever reasons it's giving you. Well, you get that little taste and it's proving the mind wrong. It helps you go beyond beyond the mind, connect to the heart. Now, I mentioned the heart here. Obviously, there's, there's more to you than a mind and a heart. Here I'm going to talk about your body for a little while. Like your heart, your body is wonderful for bringing you beyond your mind. Now, I'll go into a few ways that this, you, this happens. This happens, of course, with physical activity, especially physical training. In other words, physical conditioning, exercise, and skill development. These physical skills can pull you out of your mind and into your physical experience, into your body, out of thought, into your body. This dynamic is something I enjoy about physical kung fu training. It's one reason I enjoy it so much. Back when I was an apprentice, um, kung fu priest, and in intensive full-time training, my teacher observed that I was less in my mind than I had been and much more in my body. Less in thought and thinking about things and more into experiencing. All, all these years later, my physical training is still helping me in this way. But don't worry, you don't have to train full-time to use physical activity to bring you beyond your mind. Just like you don't always need to go beyond your mind in general. But when you do need to or want to go beyond your mind uh, to feel better, when you do choose that, you can use physical activity to do so. That's why <laughs> there's so much. And I, I'm going to do a, a separate episode about the body. But speaking a little here towards the body, it's one of the things that we don't necessarily give enough credit to our bodies for helping us with. And there's, there's a lot of talk about the mind-body connection in a lot of different health and wellness circles uh, and, and physical healing arts and practices, disciplines. Well, one of the least aspects of the mind-body relationship that I've, I've been hearing about is what I'm describing here, the, where the body helps you out of your mind. So much as how does the mind affect the body as far as what we think of with mind-body connection. But the body has leadership capabilities as well. And the body itself can help you with your mind, going beyond it to feeling better. I think that's really worth being aware of. And, and, and when you think of your body and, and your relationship to your body, that's an appreciation I would really recommend uh, putting some time into and thanking your body for its ability to do that. And of course, one of the greatest ways to appreciate it is to utilize it that way. Now, I was going to say one of my favorite physical activities that helps with, with going beyond your mind is a walking meditation that I teach. I call it a walking balance meditation because there is a balance challenge involved. It is simple to learn and simple to do, yet just challenging enough to get you out of your mind and into your physical experience. It's simple, easy, and it so quickly works. When I've introduced students to this over the years, I always I begin my students with this experience because it's it's such a quick uh, experience for them that works, or they try it and it works right away. Now. If you would like to learn this walking balance meditation, I'll give you free access to the instructional video that I made about it. All you have to do is email me to request the video, and I will email you a link to it. Now, to do that, so my, my email address to send your request for the balance walking balance meditation video is acolon, that's A-C-C-O-L-O-N, at innervictorypower.com. Acalon at innervictorypower.com. Okay, I guess we're coming up on another break. Time flies when you're having fun. When we come back, there's a lot more to get into with all of this. Stay tuned. 
This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, before the break, I had just offered you an instructional video for a tool to use uh, for phys- a physical activity to, that's easy to use for bringing your mind, going beyond your mind and bringing you into um, better states that, f- that feel better to you. Now, again, so you just email me a request for that, and that's at Akalon at innervictorypower.com. I kind of rushed that at the end of the break there. So I wanted to repeat that so you had that, A-C-C-O-L-O-N at innervictorypower.com. Now, one thing you'll notice if, if you do uh, see the video is that I, I, do, I, I was outside when in my demonstrating. I was outside for nice scenery, but you don't need to be outside to do this. You can do the walking balance meditation in your living room. I often do, especially in the wintertime. I go from one end of the room, turn around, and go back the other direction. Um, so this is easy to do at home. I just wanted to clarify that. When you see the video, it's, you don't have to have a huge amount of space and be outdoors. Now, besides exercise, there is another type of physical activity that helps you go beyond your mind. It makes life more enjoyable and enlivens you. I highly recommend this, folks. Can you guess what it is? Physical play. You know, I had a roommate uh, a while back that some years ago. We were talking about adults and play and being playful and the importance of it. And he was saying that adults would be, we'd be more happy as adults if there were adult playgrounds. And he envisioned, uh, he was at the time working in a law office in downtown Minneapolis. And he was envisioning playgrounds around downtown Minneapolis that you would go, people would spend their lunch break at the playgrounds running around playing lava tag and other games. I have to agree with him that this, if this was part of our way of life, physical play, uh, running around playing games during our physical activity, during our work breaks, we would be, would be happier. But anyway, physical play is a, another quick, easy way to connect, to move out of, beyond your mind and connect to what feels good. Playfulness is a good feel activity. We all know this. More so as children, as the older we get, we start to outgrow that um, typically, not all of us, but there's wisdom in maintaining a playful uh, sense a play in doing a physical play. Some of us have children 
and then so we're in physical play more and we, we kind of get that. I know one of my favorite physical play activities is wrestling with, with my boy. We get to wrestling and then there's laughter ringing out in the, in the living room. It's, it's awesome. It's kind of hard to, in that state, uh, for the mind to create a mental barrier, isolating me from what feels good. Physical play just breaks right through that if we let it. Now, partly this is because physical play helps us go beyond our minds into playfulness and lightheartedness. Now, a little while back, I mentioned that, um, oh, here, before I move out of beyond uh, the topic with the body, I want to stay with the body a little bit more and focus. I want to add that you, uh, you can go beyond your mind with the body's sensuality. That's a big one, too. Besides the obvious, a wonderful example of this is settling into f- the feeling of a warm summer breeze on your skin. And I know right about now, as it's cold, getting cold and it's winter, <laughs> spend a moment with that thought. Just imagine your skin feeling a warm summer breeze. That's a, even just imagining it can connect us a little bit uh, out of mental suffering and into what feels good. My body just felt good. I, I felt that on my arm, imaginary sense, of course, but my arm kind of felt good, like a, a warm breeze relief there. Now, another sensual experience that works quite well is rubbing a bare foot across tree bark. Now, so for those of us that are more ticklish, it might be a little bit much, but if you're not too ticklish, if you try rubbing your, your bare foot across tree bark, especially if it's like uh, an exposed large root on the ground, so you can just stand above it and rub your foot back and forth. That is a sensual experience that pulls you out of the mind and into things that feel good. That shifting your state of being. Now, I mentioned a while back that your soul can also help you go beyond your mind. The way that your soul can help you go beyond your mind is to get your mind to back off a bit in deciding your reality. Your soul can do this by asserting its leadership over your mind. Soul leadership, by the way, is a core dynamic of self-mastery, and I will discuss this more in, you guessed it, an upcoming episode. When your mind is following your soul, it is much easier to go beyond its influence, the mind's influence, in, in your sense of being. Don't think too hard about how this works, though. That would involve your mind more it be counterproductive and make this harder to do. Instead of intellectualizing your soul leading your mind and your mind following your soul and how this helps you go beyond your mind when you choose to, instead explore the dynamic, experiment with it, and discover this experience. Experiment and try this out. Don't think, just try it. Okay, so far, I've talked a lot about going beyond your mind to feel good. Going beyond your mind is also helpful to know without knowing. See, the mind is geared toward knowing and relies on intellectual knowledge, deductions, and in a pinch, fabrications for its knowing. Yes, fabrications, you know, making stuff up. Anyway, while intellectual knowledge has usefulness, it does not always lead to correct deductions or accurate knowing. You can know without knowing by going beyond your mind into your intuition. Here again is the dynamic of using action to go beyond your mind. Going beyond thought with action. In this case, the action is listening and feeling. Those are interchangeable uh, words for the same thing, really. Listening and feeling into your intuition. This is the spiritual listening I spoke about, by the way, when I shared about my Kung Fu priest training. Of course, it's hard to have patience for listening if you are busy intellectually, if your mind is busy intellectually knowing. (laughs) Man, I'm having fun. Time flew again. It's time for another break. 
Okay, I'll tell you more about this when we come back. This is Akalon Hollingsworth with Spiritual Kung Fu. I've been coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Aklon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, I was talking about the soul helping get beyond the mind. Now, when, no, actually, sorry, I was talking about going into knowing without knowing. Oh, I'm excited about this. Yes. Okay. When the mind is preoccupied with knowing, it it's hard to, to hear what your intuition is saying. So the, the very knowingness of the mind sometimes cuts you off from knowing without knowing. You go beyond that by, again, remembering your mind is only part of you and letting another aspect of you uh, emerge uh, in more prominence. So you, you, you and shift gears from one to the other, from the mind to the intuition. And I was saying that this was this intuition, this uh, going from thought into into feeling or listening, that was part of the spiritual listening I was sharing about in my Kung Fu priest training. Now, my teacher, he would often say this about it. He'd say, "Don't try to figure it out. Feel into the answer." And my, my teacher used the terms listening and feel interchangeably. Albert Einstein had something to say that supports the importance of intuition over mind. And he he said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And I say, go beyond your thinking mind into your intuition. And remember that the usefulness of doing this can have high stakes benefits and not doing this can have high stakes consequences. I gave an example of this in episode one when I shared how listening to my mind, knowing that I shouldn't go see an ex-girlfriend at a particular time did, and did not listen to my intuitions knowing, which was telling me to go see that girlfriend at that time. My mind didn't know what my intuition knew. My mind was busy knowing that I needed some space and that my girlfriend that I had broken up with would need some space and that it would be best not to go see her. 
my mind didn't know what my intuition knew. As I said, my, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend would be raped at that time. My intuition knew that without me knowing it, knowing without knowing. But my mind was in the way of with what it knew about me needing space and her needing space. Sorry, sometimes it's a hard topic to give an example with. Anyway, so my mind was in the way of that just as uh, it just had a bunch of intellectual stuff going that seemed to think it was best to consider and make it the choice from. In short, my mind knew I should not go see her, but um, my mind's knowing made me deaf and blind to the knowing which I needed needed in order to stop someone I cared about being hurt. My mind's knowing made me deaf and blind to the knowing which I needed to work with. Just like my mind's knowing had blinded me from my intuition knowing that my friend who had urged me to break up with my girlfriend wasn't being supportive of me, but was manipulating me to break up with her as part of his plan to rape her. These were high stick consequences for me not going beyond my mind to my intuition in that situation. Now, there was a high stake benefit from me going beyond my mind into my intuition at a party a couple years later. One of my friends and one of my roommates disappeared from the partying at the same time. My mind told me that my roommate wouldn't hurt my friend. My mind told me there was nothing to worry about. I went past my mind and felt into my intuition. I intuitionally listened. Suddenly, I was urgently led to check the bathroom. I did and discovered my roommate had locked my friend in the bathroom and was forcing himself on her. I got in there and got her away from him before he hurt her, but only because I went beyond my mind to knowing without knowing. My teacher gave me a less dramatic example of this, and uh, he was driving his van down, down the road, and his intuition told him to turn around and find another way to go. His mind appraised the situation and determined there was no reason to turn around and that it's best to go forward still. Um, it was halfway down the block at this point, and it would be quicker to keep going the way he was going, and he did what his mind told him to do. Shortly after that, he discovered the hard way why his intuition had told him to turn around and go to a different route. The... Uh, his, he ran over a he fought, discovered a hole in the road, and when he ran over it, he blew out his tire or one of his tires. So the mind was incorrect in its knowing that going forward and, and not changing course would be the quicker way to go. It ended up being longer way around and more expensive and more of a hassle. So there you go, a less dramatic example. Okay. Oh, actually, talking about the mind and the intuition, it's reminding me of there's I made with my my school, I, I made a spiritual kung fu meditation card deck. And one of the cards uh, says life is the terrain, mind is the map, intuition is the compass pointing true north. So what I'm meaning here with that is that your mind, I'll say here that your mind is not a big enough map to cover all of life and your intuition and your heart will guide you true when you find yourself in terrain the mind has not mapped. Okay, I'm going to say another reason for going beyond the mind and that's to fully experience. Self-consciousness is a hindrance to direct experience. Go beyond your mind and you can experience directly and fully. In other words, don't think, experience. G. Bluestone, a fellow warrior sage, put this really well in a book that he wrote called Light of the Kensei. And I'm going to tell you what he said about that. He's got a nice passage in his book about going beyond thought. And I'll read that passage to you, or I'll describe that after we get back from this break. 
This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Aklan Hollingsworth, coming to you live in the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, right before the break, I was leading into uh, a passage in the book Light of the Kensei by G. Bluestone. Uh, He has a short passage in that book about going beyond thought. He says, The unadorned perception is both a more powerful and more basic aspect of energy than are the dancing symbols of thought. This is not to say that the Kensei does not think. And when he says Kensei, he means a warrior sage. He does not think, but rather that the thinking has become a secondary rather than a primary means by which he experiences the world. It is the direct communion of unadorned perception that is the greatest treasure. This treasure defies cultivation, but occurs naturally whenever vital awareness remains independent of thought. Now, the unadorned perception G. Bluestone is referring to here is direct experience. And as I have said, direct experience is beyond thought, beyond your mind. Reflection and pondering are more useful after an experience. First, be the experience. You can think about it after. Now, it's possible to think so much about what you're doing that you barely experience it. And the tendency for this is getting worse, as the culturally speaking, as the common way of life is moving further away from experiencing your experiences and more and more into thinking about showing them off to people. Sharing our experiences with people, even strangers, has become more important to us, culturally speaking, than experiencing them. When this is happening, the mind is preoccupied with displaying rather than experiencing. One of the problems with this is that the mind does a bunch of figuring and worrying about people's perceptions of your experiences. And from this, it can generate anxiety thoughts, agitation thoughts, and catastrophizing thoughts. And with these thoughts, coming full circle from the beginning topic of uh, going beyond the mind to feel good, can build a a mental suffering wall that cuts you off from what feels good. Now, when you go beyond your mind into fully experiencing, you relate to yourself in your experiences rather than your mind's perception of how other people perceive you. And you skip creating that pesky mental barrier to what feels good. Now, I've been going on for a while about going beyond your mind and the purposes for doing so. 
but I know this can be tricky to conceptualize. The mind is pervasive. It's a pervasive filter. It can seem like there is no beyond it. Consider it this way, though. Your mind is like a window. If your eyes are close to the clear glass of the window, it can seem like there is no distinction between the window and what is outside it. Your mind is the window, and life is beyond the window, the window that you view, view it from. The common mistake we make about the mind is thinking of it as reality. The mind is not reality. It interprets reality. It helps create and shape reality. Your mind is even a small part of reality, but it is not reality in its entirety any more than your mind is all there is to you. It's a part of you. You are a small part in a reality, and your mind is a fraction of you, merely an aspect of you. So don't mistake your mind for reality. It will help you to meditate on this mental subtlety because mistaking your mind for reality is a mistake without, can be a mistake that we make without even realizing it. Explore this concept for a while for awareness. Like I've been telling my students for years, awareness is the first step to freedom. I'm going to bring this right back to the body here again and say that your body can help you go beyond your mind to experience after all your body was made for physical experience. Your heart will also help you go beyond your mind to experience, its specialty being emotional experience, something that without, you're not fully alive. And your soul will help you go beyond your mind to experience as well. After all, your soul handles your spiritual experiences. After all, that's what it's here for. Oh, and here, there's one critical way your mind can get it, be in your way that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's it can be it can mute your essence. If your mind gets clogged with insecurity about yourself, shame, fear, hatred, etc., it can mute the wonderfulness of your essence, the core signature energy of you. With this inner light dimming ment with with these inner light dimming mental stains. Mental Kung Fu will clean these mental stains out of your consciousness. But if you need to unmute your essence on the quick, say to contribute your wonderful essence fully in a situation, perhaps to connect with someone in a wonderful way, go beyond your mind by bypassing its muting effect. With no mental barrier in your way, you can step forward into the world with the full presence of your essence and shine your inner light brightly. This is extraordinarily helpful in bringing light to the darkness, by the way. Now, do you remember what I suggested to do to lighten the work of checking the quality of your thoughts in the introduction I gave to mental kung fu? I told you to think less. Fewer thoughts equal less work managing your mind. Well, when you go beyond your mind, you, of course, think less. And it's nice not to have a flood of thoughts pouring through your mind. Now, regarding this, my kung fu teacher used to quote Ernie Larson, a well-known counselor, to portray the mind's tendencies for incessant chatter, he would say, my mind is like a vulture sitting on my bedpost at night. And as soon as I open my eyes in the morning, it says to me, I'm glad you're up. I have so much to tell you. This image is comical to me and it's always helped me ignore my mind's inane commentary. You can use this image as a tool for doing the same for yourself. From Ernie Larson to my teacher, to me, to you. Now, in addition to what I'm teaching about training your mind, managing your mind, and going beyond your mind, there is a wonderful story you can learn from. It's a story about a man being taught how to deal with all this mind stuff by an enjoyable teacher character. It's called Way of the Peaceful Warrior, and I highly recommend you read it. In fact, I assign this book to my students. This book is written by Dan Millman, who happens to be the main character because the story is based on events from his life. Now, I realize with all this talk I've been talking about the problems with the mind, that I might be giving the impression that your mind is no good, is no good use. Well, it doesn't. I'm just kidding. It does. But it's important not to give your mind control over all you are, do, and create. The mind is the most problematic when it assumes command of your being over other aspects of you, especially your heart and your soul. You are better off when your mind is following the leadership of your heart and your soul. Then your mind functions in proportion to how it is useful and nothing more. Getting your mind to function in proportion to its usefulness is as much a part of self-mastery as, as training and managing it. When your mind's influence over you is dominant, it is out of its depth and scope. Your mind isn't meant to be in control of you. 
At best, it is a function when trained that serves your soul. Your soul is meant to be in control of you. This doesn't typically happen in people, though, because there is this, well, it's discouraged as we're growing up, either by abuse or um, other discouragements. All the while, the mind doesn't get trained properly and even gets programmed dysfunctionally against so many of us, decreasing our well-being. And without your soul taking the lead, your mind takes over, often suppressing your soul and not having been trained, it often generates suffering. This is a huge reason for it, that it's, it's so hard for so many of us to win our inner battles. The, mind, the mind's dominance of dysfunction gets in the way. Okay, more on this after this brief break as I wrap this episode up. Stay with us. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ouvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So, I was talking about the mind needing, needing help to follow the soul and to, well, not be problematic for you and not be in your way. So go beyond your mind when necessary and also train it. Train your mind to support the needs of your body, your heart, and your soul. Instead of letting your mind rule you, make it, and make it your appreciated servant. I say appreciated servant because when it is in service to you, appreciation for, it, for its service will help it function in accordance with your well-being. It will help keep it on track. And it's, so it's a good thing you're learning mental kung fu in the show to train your mind properly. And it's a good thing you're learning spiritual kung fu to enhance the leadership of your body, heart, and especially the soul. Now, you may have noticed that I have not been mentioning your ego. You may even be thinking I'm unfairly blaming the mind for some of the ego's the problems of ego. Truth is, they often team up or in, intertwined, and they're running amok and causing problems. Your ego is like your mind. It needs help in order to serve you well. And I will be addressing how to help your ego serve you well in, yes, an upcoming episode. Okay. I want to... I, I began this episode announcing next week's topic, and I want to speak a little bit to it uh, before wrapping up here. Next week... I will be, remember this. I will be addressing with with spirit, the angle of spiritual kung fu the war between women and men. So this will be the first. So far, I've been uh, there's the background of how spiritual kung fu came to be that I, I shared my kung fu priest training, and then so far I've been from there been getting into self mastery uh, aspects of the show self self mastery themes with the minds is what I've began. But next week will be the first episode of spiritual Kung Fu show where we get into bringing light to the darkness. And I tell you years before I got into spiritual Kung Fu, it became a Kung Fu priest just as a child, as a boy, I grew up observing the culture I was growing up in and I was seeing the war of, of men and women. And I was not happy about it, and I wanted it to get better. And I kept 
been keeping waiting for it to get better and it's been getting worse lately so we're gonna tackle that next week spiritual kung fu has i have a lot on the topic that we can work with for making it better rather than worse and i tell you this this war of, of, of women and men is it's the kind of war where there's so much woundedness involved and reactionary and it, it becomes toxic and i uh, a lot of us can make it worse while trying to make it better so we're going to look at that next week i hope you join me i hope you bring a lot of other people tell your friends to listen to that show and remember it's a call-in show so you can weigh in on the topic Okay, um, so we're gonna we're gonna get in, going deep on that one next week, and discuss how to actually. You know, I I've been talking in this episode about going beyond the mind. Next week, let's talk about going beyond the war of men and women. Instead of fighting it eternally here. It can be transcended, if even just one of us at a time. Okay, so, yes, please join me next week um, and, and bring, bring your friends. It's an important topic to so many of us. Um, def definitely, uh, I'm stoked about This is one of my missions in life that I referenced in my Kung Fu priest training episode. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad to get to it next week. I'm very excited. Hope you join me. Okay. Thanks for listening tonight. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Listen in next week. This is, this has been spiritual Kung Fu and I'm your host, Akalon Hollingsworth. I've been coming to you live on the BBM global network and tune in radio. You've been listening to Spiritual Kung Fu with Akalon Hollingsworth. Listen each week for a deep health, soul strengthening, and transcendent transformation. And learn the skills for defending your well-being and becoming a master. Right here on Spiritual Kung Fu. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.